Well, hello again, and thanks for tuning in to our final episode of All Access Pass Live TV. I'm your cruise host, Jason, and today we are blessed with a true legend on this stage. He is the king of blue-eyed soul. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Felix Cavallari. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Good evening. Whatever. Good. Hello. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. I'm really glad to have you here with us. Uh, thanks for making the journey. These guys, they don't ever sleep. You guys ever no. sleep? You don't sleep. I didn't think so. They haven't slept since Woodstock. Why start now? This is not... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what tour did you go on today, sir? What tour did you go on? I went on the Felix Cavalieri Go to Shore Tour. Go to Shore Tour. <laughs> and what's included in that tour here? Stores. Stores. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> perfect. Uh... First and foremost, allow me to be probably not the first, one of the millionth to say thank you so much for last night. You absolutely Great. killed that show last night. Thank you. Do you I, I, what's it like? What's it like being up there on a flower power cruise with fans that are truly in love with you, that can it's sing all like your this, songs? It's just like this, same thing. Yeah. Same thing. Everybody's like, you know, uh, it, it's, it's really interesting because... Uh, being from the East Coast, let's put it like that, okay? East Coaster. Being of an ethnicity that I'm extremely proud of. Uh, how could you say this? We're loved by our people. And, uh, and you're loved by your people. And, 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 and it makes it so easy to play and sing in front of people who love you. It's easy. Amen. I... I I may even venture to say, and I mean this in, I mean this in the, this is probably going to come out wrong, but understand how I mean this. What I found this cruise is it's almost the ethnicity of everyone on board is flower power. It, it's almost kind of how it feels. It's one generation. It's one love. It's one unity. I've done a lot of these cruises, and I've never seen this type of community in one place. Is this your following? Is this what you're used no, to? No, uh, when I explained like on stage, I think I said it last night, but you know, in our generation, we did not have the internet. We did not have the Facebook. We didn't have the Instagram. We didn't even have these pain in the phones. We could actually go somewhere and nobody bothered us for maybe, you know, 15 minutes. But we had our music. You see, our yeah. music, we were all tied together by the music. Sure. Believe it or not, all the way over to England, you know, people listened to one another. We kind of grew up together. We went through our engagements together. We went through our, you know, drugs together. We went through our, our, our unhappiness together. Everything kind of together. We kind of grew up all together. And that's the feeling that we have when we go on stage. It's like, you know, hey, connect to that source so to speak it's beautiful that's what you're seeing here man this it's is the beautiful. old uh, this is the flower power people yeah oh it's gorgeous <laughs> yeah i've literally done thousands of cruises and i'm not joking thousands of cruises and i've done hundreds of musical charters and this really is the most unique experience i've ever been a part of well good it, it, see that far. it's you guys by far it's all you it guys is. it is it is it really is and you know as i say being part of this generation which you know as i as i uh, you know, we did a tour with the Rascals in 2013, 2014, you know. And uh, that's a long time ago, man. That's 50 years ago. You know, to st years. think that I'm still out there and we're still out there rocking and rolling and playing music this time is pretty cool. But It's pretty cool. Allow me to add to that, though. Allow me to add to that before you clap. It's one thing to still be playing. It's another thing to still be playing as well and performing as well as you are. Last night was hot. It was hot. I've been telling them all what they're in store, what they have in store for them tonight at nine o'clock. The Silver Crowd, because the Silver Crowd's fun. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Silver, silver Crowd, huh? Yeah, the Silver Crowd. We got a gold crowd and a silver crowd. And got uh, it. Yeah, there you you get the silver people tonight. Uh, so allow me to take a few steps backward and, and help me out. Help me walk th walk through some of this with me. And if I'm wrong, I apologize. I did a little homework. The stereos, the escorts. Let's talk about the beginning. Let's talk about the beginning a little bit. How did uh, you become who you are? Whew. Well, when I was five years old, my mom, she said, we're going to give this guy piano lessons. And believe it or not, I did three piano lessons a week for eight years. Yeah, because uh, I was a classical pianist. And uh, I, uh, you know, I guess th they wanted me to do that. And the problem that I had was, 
you know, uh, I got a little bit of a rebellious nature. You? Know you? What I'm yeah, you know, and uh, every time I would try to do something that wasn't written by, you know, one of these guys 100 years ago, 150 years ago, they with the stick, you know, and they, <laughs> so, so I said, you know, I'm going to have to make a change because, you know, when, when, you, when you're a creative person, you, you want to do something that's not already done, you know, and uh, uh, so, so any, anyway, I was, I was in uh, junior high, my first day of school, this gentleman in front of me who became one of my dear friends turned around to me and he said, hey, you like rock and roll? I would never heard rock and roll. I don't know what it was. But I said, yeah, man, because you got to be, you know, you got to be, you know. You got to be cool. You got to be, be in. Yeah, yeah. I went right home, found out what he was talking about. It was, uh, in New York, it was Alan Freed, you know. 10-10 ten, yeah. ten wins. You guys remember, right? So we were literally uh, present at the beginning, or the, almost the exact beginning, of when rock and roll hit the airwaves. So you're talking about, like, you know, uh, the finest artists, I think, seriously, you know, um, you know, not to get like crazy about the modern times, but you know, do uh, you know how you do word processing? You know, mm. people people can't spell anymore. They just go check the spelling. Autocorrect. So, right, that's it. I'll f we do that with singing now. Auto tune. So these guys and ladies that are singing, they don't have to sing anymore. We'll fix you. As a matter of fact, see you. I'm gonna make you a singer tonight. You know. <laughs> well, we didn't have that in, in the old days. So the people who came up. Such as, you know, the Platters, you know, and the Drifters, and Benny King, and Smokey Robinson. They had voices from God. I mean, it was unbelievable the way these people say. So this is what I heard when I first came in. You sure. see, I heard this. Because I was actually a pre-med student, believe it or not. You know? How'd you feel walking in the operating room and seeing that? Saying, okay, here's what we're going to do. Yeah. Nap. So my whole family was in pre-med, and it just shows you, because when I, when I speak at uh, some of the schools, some of the music schools, I, I tell these guys, I said, you know, don't worry about it, man. What, whatever's going to happen for you, it, not that it's preordained, but it's kind of preordained. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, sure. I had no idea I was ever going to be a musician, none whatsoever. But I, I, I started, you know, playing music, and people liked the music, and people kept coming. And then what I did is, uh, some of you can relate to this, uh, I had a group, we went to the Catskill Mountains for summer. Now those of you who know the Catskill Mountains say that the Catskills, like, it's kind of like this for the whole summer, right? I mean, you know, it, they, they rocked up there, you know, and I, I had a job, I don't want to take all your time telling these the, stories. It's your time, what are you talking about? But I was making 60 bucks a week, and all I could Happily. Eat. And we were playing for the, you know, when the guests come into the hotel, you know, we played, you know, for the arrival, you know, we did cocktail hour, we did the teens, and we did the lounge at night, we did the, you know, it was the twist in those days, you know, so, and I loved it, man, I absolutely, I couldn't believe it, it's show business, yes, you know, and uh, into the main theater, uh, every week they would have a star come in, and one of the weeks came in was Joey D and the Starlighters. And they saw me, and uh, it was so funny because, you know, these people would, be, would change, you know, my life because I met this, this group of guys called the Brigadis, you know what I mean? And that old boy, whew. first thing that David Brigadi comes up to me, starts staring at my nose, he says, are you Jewish? <laughs> <laughs> I should have known then my life was never going to be the same. <laughs> you were in. Yeah. So to make it story short, I, I, I did not really want to go back to school after that. Joey D band left and went to Europe. And during that European tour, their organ player quit. He had just been recently married. They remembered me, they called me. I went, flew to Frankfurt, Germany. Seriously, the next thing that I know, I'm working on a stage with the Beatles. Now, no one knew the Beatles yet over here. So I walk in and everybody is hysterical. As screaming, like, you know, what happened? Is there trouble here? Is there something? You know, what is this? It's the Beatles. Oh, didn't, wasn't sure what that meant, you know, <laughs> but, but it was these guys with long hair that were playing, but you couldn't hear a note they were playing because everybody was screaming. I says, well, you know, this, this might be a good job for me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I could do this. How long were you with, uh, how long were you with the, the Starlighters? Well, uh, 
I was with him about uh, about a year, you know, something like that. And and uh, then I took another job out in Las Vegas with this lady uh, who was uh, she was uh, like a very wealthy hotel owner's wife. And this was a very interesting job. What kind of job was this, well, sir? Was, <laughs> well, we were backing her up, and she was singing, in quotes, in the lounge. In quotes. Singing. Well, as I say, didn't have auto tune in those days. <laughs> <You> I <know>? got you. <laughs> But I did that for a while uh, out there, and, that, and, and that's kind of where I, I found Dino. I brought Dino out there because I met Dino Donnelly in New York in this club, you know, who was just like, you know, the best drummer I've ever seen in my life. I mean, he was like magic, you know. I mean, he would not only play drums, but he would have a show at the same time and still not miss the beats. So anyway, that's pretty much how I started. Hey, thanks for not turning the channel. Here we are with more All Access Pass Live with the one and only Felix Cavalieri. So you've toured with, uh, you, did, did, correct me again, correct me, uh, Ringo's, one of Ringo's all-star bands, uh, the third, the yes. third all-star band maybe. Uh, you've done a lot with Stevie Van Zandt. Yes. You've done a lot uh, with that. Talk to us a little bit about that, that time frame there. Well, this is the 90s you talk about and, and 2000s. Mm -hmm. uh, well, with Ringo it was interesting because, you know, you're sitting and you're playing and you look over there and there's a beetle. <laughs> you know, it was really wild, but he, he's such a lovely man. I mean, he's really a sweetheart, you know, and uh, he just adores being on stage. He, he's such a ham. God bless him. He loves it, you know, and uh, yeah, I could tell you a lot of stories about that, but you know, we, we were all very respectful of him, you know, because he's, he's just charming. You and know? he's a beetle. And he's a beetle, <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he's so in love with his lady there, Barbara. Oh my God, it's just like they're, they're great. But, uh, you know, it, it, you know, like I'll tell you a quick Ringo story, right? We're, we're in Boston, Massachusetts, and we did a show up there, and uh, the reviewer in the, in the newspaper said, Ringo was out of tune. <laughs> Ringo had some bad notes. And here's a guy, he's like a zillionaire. You know what I mean? He's known all over the planet. He's one of the most, he was crushed. So he came back, really, he was crushed. These reviewers, they got to check it out, man, because, you know, some of us, we're pretty sensitive guys, you know what I'm saying? Excuse me, Mr. Ringo. So I said, he says, do I really sing out of tune? What am I going to tell him? Of course he sings out of tune. Like, no, 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 not as long as I'm on your tour. No, oh. no, you're great. I says, but you're Ringo. It doesn't matter. I says, don't you understand? You can exactly. go up there and go... They say, man, that's Ringo. I'm coming back next year. Yeah, there, I think there's, well, and that's kind of what I meant, I guess, when I was referenced to you earlier and said it's one thing to perform. It's another thing to perform the way you still do. But he so. sings the same notes out of tune every night. Yeah, bless his, <laughs> bless his heart. Can't win them all. We all live in a suburb submarine. You know, that's Ringo. <laughs> He's not a singer. He's not a singer. Uh you said you're on. You, you said you're you're a piano player. Obviously, well, we know you're a piano player. You mentioned you're a piano player. Lots of lessons. Uh, as you started to transition from your classical training into the rock and roll world, who were you looking up to? Who were the influences? Well, as I say, we go back to the beginning. Now you've got uh, you've got keyboards, right? You've got Little Richard, Fats Domino, Jerry Lee Lewis. Not bad to start. Not right? bad. You got singing, as I say. You got Benny King. You got Smokey Robinson. You got Marvin Gaye. Not bad. All of the people that I heard, I tried to, you know, because you, you realize when you when you first start playing, you play other people's songs, sure, and uh, basically you try to emulate them, you don't know, sound like them. So that's that's how you start, and that really that's, that's what I tell people all the time. You want to sing, sing like X, Y, you know, and sooner or later you'll get something hopefully that's your own, you know. And how did your own sound come from that? Do you think? I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> fair enough. Fair play. I just kept going. <laughs> now uh, I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read off uh, four four quick sentences. Uh, not even sentences. Four points here, and I want your I want your take on this sentence. Songwriting Hall of Fame, vocal group Hall of Fame, Grammy Hall of Fame, and of course the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. <laughs> There's no way that's one person, but it is. Yeah. Well, you got to outlive them. <laughs> <laughs> I think Pete Rose is going to find that out, you know? Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> hey, fair enough. 
What's it like? I mean, you know, being being recognized as as the Hall of Fame in so many different categories and ways. I mean, in every way you can. How does it, what? Well, the, the nice thing about it, and especially the Songwriters Hall of Fame, that's really the one that I really, really like. Uh, because, first of all, it's not televised. So, really, a lot of people don't even know it's there. There's no Not building. a popularity contest, exactly. necessarily. And, and the other thing is, and, 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 and this cruise is kind of like a little bit of an example of that. We, meaning the people who are entertaining you all, we don't get to see one another as much as you think. You know, like I haven't seen guys like the Guess Who. I haven't seen like the, you know, the, the Grass. I haven't seen these people in years. So it's, it's, it's like a reunion sure. where we get together. Because, you know, we travel different paths. Of course, we live in different cities and we don't always get on the same bill. Well, the Hall of Fames are like that too. You know, and I think I said it at the earlier uh, interview yesterday. When, when we got into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the people who got in with us, were the Bee Gees, Jackson 5, Buffalo Springfield, Crosby, Stills, and Nash. And you know, it's really like the last time I saw those guys because some of them are gone now. Sure. So those are special events for that reason. You get to see your peers. You get to see people, you know, because, um, you know, a, a lot of artists, now today there's so many artists, but I mean, a lot of people, we, we really, really like each other. You know, we don't get the chance to see each other because, you know, we have different lives. But that's how I look at the Hall of Fames. They're like, it's part of a family that I'm very happy to be with. For the, for the Songwriter Hall of Fame, I mean, songwriting in general, were you, I, I've talked to a lot of people that write songs. I did an interview not long ago with Neil Sedaka. And, you know, talk about a great songwriter. I mean, obviously someone who can, who can just write and write. And I was, we were talking about songwriting in general, and I was, we were, you know, I said, how do they come to you? You know, it's the, it's the very layman question. You know, how do you come up with songs? And he said, sometimes they're five minutes, sometimes they're five years. He said, you just never know. Uh, do you have a process you go through for songwriting? I mean, do you have, or does it just kind of have to? Well, the easiest naturally? thing I can say is, first of all, you know, if you start off with like an emotion, such as love, it makes it very easy because if you're in love, you can really write songs. I mean, you can just imagine how happy and how thrilling you are. And then, you know, uh, from a musical uh, musical perspective, uh, when 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 you play an instrument, uh, you have a, a a tendency to kind of just like drift. That's the way I put it. Just like in other words, instead of playing something that is already there, you just start playing. You know, and uh, all of a sudden, you know, you start playing something. Say, mm, well, let me play that again, and you play it again. You know, and you just kind of like go over like it's kind of a little bump, like a little wave. Well, when you get one of those waves, you know, you try to remember it. You know, because if it's a good wave, it's like a surfer, you know. Ride it. Exactly. <laughs> you ride it. And that's pretty much how it happens. And then, you know, if you can find uh, some words to go with that wave, you know what I mean? Like the classic story is, you know, the Beatles with uh, Yesterday. You know, his first title was Scrambled Eggs. <laughs> And that's true because, you know, uh, it just, whatever comes into your mind, you know. Scrambled eggs, but that's yeah, pretty much the process. And then, and, then, and then after that, you know, you, 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 you try to, uh, you see, today we can do it on a computer, which is like unbelievable because, you know, you, you can make drums, you can make keyboards, you can make anything. And before your idea is, is, is even half done, you've got a song here which you can play for somebody. It's very, very interesting today. I, that's that's very cool. I'm always amazed by. I mean, that's such a talent that is. Y you talk about it, but watching someone with, uh, I mean, whatever words you want to, if you want to call it a God-given talent or developed talent, I don't want to uh, to underscore how you know how much effort you put into it. But it, it's it's always it makes it's an awe. I mean, I'm just in awe of it. I, the Family Stone last night, you know, were performing, and to watch them tear that stage up, I mean, you know, and, and watch Sly Stone's daughter sing. Yeah, how just, cool is that? How yeah. cool is that? It's just so, so cool. Uh, now, something we do here, and I'm going to jump into it a little early because a bunch of people have some, some cool questions. I like to open up my last section, and we're going to do it before we go to this last break. Uh, I like to open up some questions from the audience, and I, I break down the fourth wall here, as they know, and I submit cards out there to them, and they submit questions back. So if you'd be so kind as to entertain some of our folks out here. Uh, Mary Ann from the Bronx. Yeah, hey, Mary Ann. Yeah. She says, uh, will the Rascals reunite for any other tours? The Once Upon a Dream tour was fantastic wow. for me since I was just a little bit young when the group toured back in the day. Well, you know, I really don't think it'll happen. And the reason I say this is because these guys are old. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys are old. Those other guys. <laughs> You know, there's 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 a spirit that you have when you when you when it doesn't matter how old you are, you still feel like you know, 
I can do anything. But if you don't have that, you know, you you got to be careful. And then there's also some health issues and there's some mental issues. <laughs> There can, you can only go so far on the road before that happens, I'm sure. Which actually leads me nicely into Kathy from Rally. Kathy, all the way from North Carolina, says, uh, <laughs> tell us, Felix, at what age does a young rascal become an old rascal? <laughs> it happens very quickly. <laughs> well, here's, here's how that happened. You know, we were, uh, we, we were I, I think I told the story. Did you all hear the story about Soupy Sales with the name? Yeah, well, Soupy Sales had a lot to do with us giving, the, giving us the name The Rascals. But what happened is we were on the road. We were going to California. We were just about to play the Whiskey Go-Go for the first time, and this is when Good Lovin' came out. And uh, all of a sudden, we got a call from our manager, Sid Bernstein, rest his soul. Sid Bernstein was, was a heck of a guy, but he didn't ask us what we like to call ourselves. And what happened is another group came along. Uh, now, we're going to go back quite a ways. Anybody remember the Harmonica Rascals on Milton Burrow? Now, that's a long time ago, but we're talking a long time ago, you know? <laughs> they, they threatened, like, to sue over the name The Rascals. So our manager, in his infinite wisdom, said, how about The Young Rascals? We said, how about you go to hell? <laughs> <laughs> but he had already done it. Gone to hell? Oh, the name. So for years, this is a true story. For, for years, I used to have people come knock on my door and say, hey, man, did that little dog have a, really, was that a circle around him? Was that real? <laughs> you son of. <laughs> but I'll take the royalties. True story. All so right. when, we became, when we became known as the rest, we said, you know, let them sue us. <laughs> We're the rascal. Yeah. Perfect. Do not turn that channel. We're going to come back with a few more questions with the fabulously entertaining Mr. Felix Cavallari. Yeah. Hey, thanks for not going anywhere, and welcome back. Here we are once again, and for the last time, with the one and only Mr. Felix Cavallari. Thank you for being so candid, first and foremost. And a couple of our guests here have, have a few more questions for you. John, who comes to us from Florida, no city, he doesn't want to be found. He says, uh, very simply put, and I think this is a great question, do you still love to perform? Oh, absolutely. And the reason being because look how great these people are, seriously. See, Amen. You're, you're sitting here with people smiling at you. You know, it's like saying, no, I don't, I don't want to go out. I'm going to stay in the rest of my life in this room. <laughs> you know? <laughs> You know, of course, it's fun, you know, and, and, and most of the people who uh, either do it as a profession or, uh, as I said earlier, who, who do it as a hobby, playing music, I mean, they love it. You know that. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun to play, you know, and, and it's really even more fun when people like what you play. <laughs> it's the icing. It's the icing on the cake. How often do you tour? How often do you, uh, how many gigs, how many sets do you guys play? Or not sets, but well, gigs. Well, we, we go out quite a bit, you know, like 40 or 50 times a year now. That's still I'm a lot. Happy to yeah, say, which still is, a lot. Uh, is a lot. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty crowded out there because sure. a lot of people are on the road. But, uh, you know, as long as the people want to hear the music, we're out there, you know. Amen. Amen. That's Amen. the secret. <laughs> It's a secret to a lot of things, I believe. Margaret, who comes to us all the way from Dallas, says, since the days of the Rascals in the 60s, interesting question, have you ever had to hold a regular job other than musician or performer? I resemble that remark. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, thank God I have not. Oh, good for you. And, uh, good you for know, you. yeah, no, I have not. No, we, 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 did, uh, we, we, we did very well uh, as writers, as publishers, um, and... and uh, you know, over, over the many years, I've tried different aspects, but of the music business. I tried real estate, and I will never do that again. <laughs> I tried to buy some homes and stuff, you know, and all that. But we're musicians. That's what we do. So thank God we can still do it. Amen. Amen to that. Good for you. Steve is in the building, and Steve comes to us all the way from McMinnville, Oregon. I went to college in McMinnville. Matter of fact, I went to Linfield College. Yeah, small world. I'm a wildcat. Very small little town, actually. Uh, great question, though. Great, great line of question. Here. I love your Hammond B3 plan. How did you transition from piano to the B3? And who were your influences that pulled you to the piano? Well, it's a really quick story. Basically, when I was about 15 or 16, somebody, uh, one of my friends said, hey, man, there's this club up in New Rochelle, New York. Uh, there's, a, there's a trio up there. And uh, 
somehow, I don't know, I guess we had that uh, fake proof or whatever it was. We got in. <laughs> and uh, there was a trio, this black trio was in there. There was a drummer, a sax player, and a guy on this instrument called the Hammond organ. Now, this fellow was playing the bass with his feet. He was playing the rhythm with his hand. He was playing the leads, the solos with here, and he was singing. I said, that's me. What is that? So real quick story. Now, I had to find one of these things, you see? Hammond B3, Hammond B3, okay. Well, I, you know, there's no internet. You can't go Google the son of a gun. Macy's New York's got the Hammond B3. So I get on the train. I get on the train. I go down to the train. I get to, uh, excuse me, uh, can I help you? Uh, Mr. Sigelstein, I'll never forget him. I said, I'm this big. I says, I'm looking for a Hammond organ. He looked like, oh, yeah? He had three grand, okay? I said, that's all right. You know what I mean? <laughs> he let me in this room, and I, I can only kind of like go backwards and tell you what, it, but he let me in by myself, you know? And, and I went in, and, and there's this box. You know, they don't tell you how to, did, you ever, did any of you ever start a Hammond organ? A Hammond organ has two switches on it. One of, one of them is a motor. It goes, then the other one, click, and it goes, I didn't know this. <laughs> so I'm in there about a half an hour trying to figure out how to turn it. Wah, 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 what's wrong? Yeah. <laughs> I get it going now. It was, it was bigger than I was. It was just amazing kind of thing, you know. So I, I, I it was anyway. It was anyway. Years later, you know, I finally bought my first one. There were smaller ones that we had to get. There was uh, the L's and the M's, you know. But I bought my first B3 from uh, Manny's Music in New York, you know. Good, absolutely. And Mr. Sigelstein came to see me at the Raleigh Hotel as a rest. Oh, how cool is that? I always uh, it it to me and and forgive me if this is if people it's it's that BB King sound that I get a lot of times it, we we just we installed a whole bunch of BB King groups uh, in some various places and all of them travel with that Hammond B3 and it oh what a cool cool sound uh, that is and it's only five hundred pounds <laughs> yeah 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 just, just roll it right around uh, oh all right uh, Derry uh, great act I know this gentleman here. Felix, my very dear friend, Miss Brenda Lee, oh, whom I yes, met yes. originally on the Malt Shop Cruise, sends her love and hellos. P.S. Don't worry. I told her your show rocked the house just like hers did. <laughs> Thank you very much, Derek. Uh, are you here? Because I, I yeah, promised. He I pr He's right in the back. I promised Brenda I would say hello. So we, we must have. Br Brenda Lee was, was one of the finest human beings you will ever meet. I mean, she's really a very sweet lady, very talented lady. And when I first moved to Nashville, you know, she was one of the first people to greet, greet me and my kids. My kids love her because they were this big and so was she. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fred is fantastic. Steve from Dallas. Oh, this is an interesting question. We're going to ask you. They're, they're looking for a little dish here. Feel free to go where you want with this one. Steve, all the way from Dallas, says, uh, when the Rascals recently reunited for some shows, which other member of the, of the group did you notice they're playing the most during the shows? So, so they, so we, when you guys were playing, oh. who stood out to you? As in who, <laughs> well, yeah, you for see, the good or the that's bad That's easy reasons. because, <laughs> see, guitar players never shut up. <laughs> guitar players, they got this leaky kind of like. <laughs> so it was Gene Cornish, of course. <laughs> and uh, everyone still have their chops? Well, you see, that's what, that, what happened basically is as the months went on, they, they, they got them back, which was really, really nice because, you know, uh, uh, people don't really know or realize, but when you see a successful group, uh, they may not be the best players. But together, there's really something special there, you know. And to see that and hear that happen right in front of me again was really a treat. That's great. That was I'm a sure treat. sure it was a treat yeah. for other people as well, yeah. yeah. That was a treat. David from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, well, he asked, how'd you get the band name, which we already went through. The year started. Uh, what, when did the, the Young Rascals, what was the Young Rascals and the Rascals, the years, the beginning years? Well, we started approximately 65. 65. And... Um, Really quickly, we had a record deal within six months, and uh, we lasted officially as the five members till 70, 71. Unfortunately, that was it. You know, then we tried to continue on uh, another label, 
you know, but it was a different entity. It was a whole different band. Mm. Uh, and uh, we lasted about 72. 72. And then you started your solo career from there. Well, yeah. You know, I mean, I was really very disappointed when the group broke up, you know, because, uh, well, first of all, you know, uh, you have a dream, you know, and your dream starts. Sure. And then all of a sudden you see people kind of, it's like you're driving. And one of your wheels decided, man, I'm not going. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and the wheel went way over there somewhere. I said, holy God, we're going to crash very soon. But it, it was it was difficult because uh, you know I really never wanted to be solo. I really enjoyed you know being a part of a band. You know a bunch of guys that, you know, th there's a camaraderie there and it's fun. We had a blast. I mean, l l let me kid you. Though. We we really enjoyed ourselves. We we toured uh, the world. Uh, we made a lot of people happy, and uh, they made us very happy. Let's put it like that. And uh, the last question was off uh, off his same card there, and it said, of all of your songs, regardless if they're hits or not, regardless if they were the big hits or not, which songs mean the most to you personally? Well, you know, that's a tough question because, um, you know, like, for example, uh, it depends. Like, for example, sometimes, you know, you're just so happy and elated that, you know, Beautiful Morning comes out to be one of the happiest songs, you know. Great song. And... Uh, you know, then sometimes, you know, like a world event will happen and uh, all of a sudden you hear people got to be free and then that becomes one of your favorite songs, you know. So uh, I, I don't know. It's just uh, it's like if you have children, which is your favorite? Well, the one who's good, <laughs> that's the one you want. That's the one we like. <laughs> it's the same thing. So it changes daily. It changes it. daily. Yeah. Uh, at, at, seeing as you're our very last guest, I, I do want to honestly say thank you not only to all the artists and all of you who've been in the audience and all of you who tune in and watch on TV every single day, but truly and honestly thank you for taking the time to come down and be a part of this. We, uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm sure I speak for everyone when I say we absolutely love you and the show you put on last night and the show you're going to put on tonight, I have no doubt. Uh, God bless you and thank you for what you do. Thank you very much. One more time for the last time, please help me thank Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and the man, the legend, Mr. Felix Cavallari. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, for the last time. Sail safe. We'll see you again soon.